Hello. The rain miracle is a story told differently by two religions. One of Christianity and one of the old gods of Rome, Greece and Egypt. And the story goes like this. Uh, that in 172 AD, the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, he was the chap who played uh, by Richard Harris in the film The Gladiator, he was in the middle of a campaign with much of Europe and was fighting the Quodi in Slovakia, which is near the Danube River. And to say he was in a spot of bother is an understatement. So his troops were out of food, out of water, it was the middle of summer, and the heat wasn't making things bearable. His troops were dying, and surrounding him was his enemy, able to attack at any moment. And Aurelius actually considered surrendering, a really unusual step for uh, a Roman legion, certainly at these times. And in a final bid for help, when all hope was lost, his legion prayed, and then out of nowhere, a miracle occurred. Rain clouds gathered and it poured down, with hail, with lightning, so much rain and so hard it killed the enemy. And whilst the enemy died, the Romans looked to the sky and used their shields to funnel water into their mouths and used their helmets to collect water for their horses. And so against all odds, Aurelius won the battle. And it was such a miracle and such a campaign that the story was documented by pagans and Christians alike, but each with their own view of what happened. And in this video, we're going to look at those two stories to understand who had the most accurate view of history and who thought delivered this miracle. And what that tells us about religions, well, we'll find out, as they are very different accounts of how the miracle occurred. So welcome to the Rain Miracle and welcome to Crackenford. Aurelius returned to Rome in 176 AD after defeating the uh, Marcomini, the Quadi and the Sarmatians, and he decided to build himself a victory column. That's a column covered in reliefs, pictures of major events in his campaign, and this was completed in 180 AD. And whilst this column was being built, he also had a coin struck, and this celebrated these victories. And we know this as we have evidence of the coins of the columns that still stands in Rome. So how do we know what happened? Well, one of the pictures on the victory column, which I'll show now. And here we see a divine being at the back with wings, suggesting uh, they came down from the sky or from the heavens, and his arms and his body look as though they're made of rain. To the right, the enemy and the horses are laying dead, uh, and away to the left, we can see legionnaires holding up their shields to help drink the rainwater. Now, this column would have uh, originally been painted and the relief would have looked more like this, uh, which may allow you to pick out more of the details of what is going on. But this is our first piece of evidence that there was a rain miracle, and this was made less than 10 years after the battle. People who were at the battle were alive to see this and describe this. But we also know of three versions of this rain miracle story. Two by Christian apologists, a branch of Christianity that defends Christianity against objections, and one by pagan sources. Uh, the Christian versions were written in 180 AD by uh, Apollonius, and one written in 197 AD by Tertullian. Uh, the pagan source was written by Cassius Dio, who wrote it in about 220 AD. However, the original version has been lost, but luckily uh, it was partially transcribed before. Uh, it was lost by a Byzantine author, uh, Zephilinus. If we take a closer look at the dates these were written, the Christian versions were written within 10 and 25 years of the event, so easily within the lifetime of people who were actually at the battle. The pagan version was written about 50 years after the event, so a generation after the battle. And as we know from earlier videos we've made, uh, people can create stories of aliens and new religions in those time spans, so yeah, we would expect some creativity to creep into these stories as time passes. So let's now go over summaries of the Christian and pagan versions of the story, and you can see how they differ and changed. So the uh, Christian version of the story goes something like this, that Aurelius had a whole legion of Christian soldiers and that their prayers were answered by Jesus Christ and Christ alone, and it was he who saved them. 
and Aurelius then honoured the Christian legion by renaming them the Thundering Legion. That's a simple version of the story and not much could be exaggerated at it in it at first glance. Now the pagan version of the story goes that Aurelius had an Egyptian sorcerer uh, with him named Hanufus. Uh, and it was Harnufus' spell that summoned the god Hermes. And Hermes is the messenger of Zeus. And Hermes brought the miracle, and he doesn't mention uh, Christ or Christians in this version at all. So on first glance, it looks like the Christian version sounds more plausible than a Roman having an Egyptian sorcerer summoning a Greek god's messenger. But we'll dig a bit deeper and see what's really going on. So uh, first off, let's look at the likelihood of a whole legion being Christian, or indeed just one soldier. So uh, Marcus Aurelius considered Christians to be disloyal to the empire, as they wouldn't pledge their allegiance to his guardian spirit um, that protected the emperor. Uh, they also would make a sacrifice to Jupiter before battles due to their faith, like did the legions, and, and the Christians wouldn't do that, and Marcus Aurelius couldn't have a legion full of Christians, as he would consider them traitors to the emperor. Like, and the Empire, as he, he can trust them. So this must throw doubt on the Christian version. But just because it doesn't support the Christian version doesn't mean it does support the pagan version. So let's have a look at what's been found to support um, or oppose this. Well, at Aquilia, um, the site of a military base belonging to Aurelius in northern Italy, an inscription was found. Uh, and that inscription reads, Harnufus, sacred scribe from Egypt, and Tarentus Precus dedicate this to the appearing goddess Isis. So here we have Harnufus as a sacred scribe, a man with magical attributes, in effect a sorcerer located in name and being called out as an Egyptian at a base belonging to Aurelius. It could be coincidental but I think it's unlikely that this is the case. And next there is uh, the discovery of a temple dedicated to Jupiter Optimus Maximus. Uh, and that was in the region of the Danube where the battle took place and it was built uh, at the same time as the battle or thereabouts and here the statue of Jupiter shows him in the form of a, a thunder god throwing uh, thunder and lightning and again this may be coincidental but certainly that there is a probability that this was associated with Aurelius and the battle and one thing to remember uh, and as previously mentioned in other videos Gods from different regions and religions were often considered equivalents, just with different names and imagery. With this in mind, if we take the god Hermes, who was summoned, Hermes is the equivalent of Mercury, and the lines to the Egyptian god Thothshu. A god, um, Thothshu was a god who controlled the weather, the god of meteorology, uh, and Zeus was the equivalent of the Egyptian god Ra, and therefore the equivalent of the Roman god Jupiter Optimus Maximus, the best and greatest. So at this point, whilst the Christian story seems to have no accuracy, the pagan version of the story is looking like there is actually a number of pieces of tangible evidence to support this. But let's go back to Rome and Aurelius' return. Because not only do we have uh, the victory column, which was mentioned, but actually has no mention of Christians on it, but we have the coin which was struck. And this coin shows Aurelius on one side, his bust, and on the other side we have a representation of Hermes standing in front of an Egyptian temple. Um, and this coin was struck after the battle, but was stopped when the column was completed. And again, this seems far more than coincidental, you know. And perhaps the last piece of the puzzle is the naming of the legion, the Thundering Legion. Now, we know that the legion was referred to by this name after the battle, that is isn't in dispute. Do we know whether it's called the Thundering Legion um, before this? Was the name changed to honour Jesus Christ, um, as written by the Christian apologists? So in Egypt, an inscription was found, and I'll put a reconstruction of it up, and it says that it was created by officers in the 12th Legion, and this legion was called the Thundering Legion, and was dated in the 11th year of Nero. The 11th year of Nero was 64 AD, over 100 years before the Christian version of the battle said they had named the legion this. So the legion was called the Thundering Legion long before the battle. In conclusion, we have lots of evidence supporting a pagan version of the story written over 50 years after the event. But we have no evidence at all supporting the Christian version written just 10 years after the event. 
and that is less time than between when Jesus was said to have died and the Gospels were said to have been written, and yet Christians were making up stories to sell Christianity in that short time. It may even make you question even if Jesus was a real story at all or completely made up. And so uh, in recognition of the pagan version, uh, uh, which is more historically accurate, uh, I'll read Dio's The Ray Miracle. Uh, it's less than a minute long, um, so here you go. For when the Romans were in peril in the course of the battle, the divine power saved them in a most unexpected manner. The Quadi had surrounded them at a spot favourable for their purpose, and the Romans were fighting valiantly with their shields locked together. Then the barbarians ceased fighting, expecting to capture them easily as a result of the heat and their thirst. So they posted guards all about and hemmed them in to prevent their getting water anywhere, for the barbarians were far superior in numbers. The Romans accordingly were in a terrible plight from fatigue, wounds, the heat of the sun and thirst, and so could neither fight nor retreat but were standing at the line and at their several posts, scorched by the heat, when suddenly many clouds gathered and a mighty rain, not without divine interposition, burst upon them. Indeed, there is a story to the effect that Harnufus, an Egyptian magician who was a companion of Marcus, had invoked by means of enchantments various deities, and in particular Mercury, the god of the air, and by this means attracted the rain. So in summary, the rain miracle was probably just a fortunate event uh, and almost certainly celebrated after as a miracle uh, brought about by prayer. But also we can see that Christian versions of history contain embellishments and, and even complete falsehoods just to sell Christianity. And these were made early on in the faith's creation, which would affect future understanding about the religion. And there are many more examples of this yeah, and this happens to not just in Christianity, but in other religions, and I'll do videos uh, talking about that in the future. So if you'd like to see this, just let me know, put comments below and, and like the video. That's it for now, really. Um, I hope you enjoyed that story. It will hopefully allow you to understand that where some people believe things are literally true, um, they're absolutely not, and often change, certainly in history, and especially the story of Christianity, and I'll do a few videos on that. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so, yes, enjoy that. Like, subscribe to the video. And um, this is Crack and Fold. Stay safe, stay well, take care. Thank you.